Take a look under the roof of any food distribution or food processing company in the world, and you'll find that they have so many needs in common. Why is it then that they all have so many different software solutions? I would say it's because no software company has got it right until now. EIC software has been developed over the past 20 years to be a complete solution for the needs of food distribution and food processing companies. When you have a complete solution in place, the gears inside your business begin to turn more efficiently. Let's take a look at just a few departments and see how they can benefit from using EIC software. And we'll go into a customer called Marvin's. And I can look at the order guide of what that customer buys. So here are all the items. And here are the sales for the last 12 weeks. I can see this one bought, it, bought this item 15 times in the last 12 weeks. Three weeks ago they bought 12. And seven weeks ago they bought three. Now to print an order guide for this account, all I need to do is click on this one button. And most solutions stop there. But with EIC, you can also press one button to send out an email to everyone at that customer. And uh, let's take a look at how that's configured. So we go to Marvin's Bar and Grill, you click on email, and here you can set up and you can say Marvin at Marvin's bar.com you can say that he likes to get his order guide in a six-week format sorted by description and he also likes to get account statements and copies of his web orders but he may have a chef there that that likes it a different way so chef at marvin's bar.com and he might like to get this and sort it this way but no account statements for him. So you can set up each account exactly the way that you need without any sticky notes to remember how customers like things. And then when you just go to guide and click on the e email button, it will email it to both the chef and the owner there and it will send it to them each the way they like. And not only that, you can send out all of the count order guides once a week or once a day uh, for particular sales reps or for all sales reps. Uh, so things like that across the board save hundreds of hours a year, just one simple feature like that. Let's take a look at a few processing examples. So here's a production module. Take a look at the production batches. I'm going to jump back to a batch where they did some uh, tenders. So steak ready tenders and I'm going to zoom into that batch. And I can see everything that was done by the production room to, to do this batch. The first thing they did was they scanned a box of tenderloin from the cooler. And when they did that it grabbed all of this information right off the box. So in just one quick move, gra grabbing the box from the cooler, scanning one beep, you get all this tied into this batch. And it, so grab the weight, grab the date, grab the pack, and grab the serial number of the box, etc. And then the next thing they did, after they had all this, they started cutting it up. And here they made a 21.91 pound box of, of, of tenders. So a tenderloin steak. And uh, they made another one, another one. Each time it was a different little weight on the scale. As soon as they put it on the scale, they scanned again, they scanned a cut ticket. And when they did that, it tied that product to this batch and to the customer. And it would also print a label for the box. So not only is it saving them the time of writing the information on the box, of the weight of the product, this is actually a barcode when it prints on there. And it also saves the order entry person later from having to write in the weights because as soon as these weights are scanned and the and the labels printed that enters into the sales order uh, with the weight on the sales line so 
after they're done with their work for the day, here's the, the fat at the end that they weighed in there. And then they can print a report. And you see the profitability of this batch. So here's your inputs. Five cases, 400 pounds, $3,400 worth of meat, $235 of labor, and $94 in credit. So these are the byproducts here that they weren't trying to achieve. So these trimmings and stir-fry frozen meat are valued at a standard cost, at $3 a pound and $0.35 a pound. So that all added up gets to be $94. We subtract that out. We have nothing going back into stock here. If we had 100 pounds of this going back into the cooler, we could put that in as a, fin as a work in progress and it would value this here and take that off. So the spread value is what's left over and that gets split up between these different finished good products. And so you see here the different yields on these products and the different and the cost based on today's production. Today it costs you $15.10 to make this per pound. Take a look at another one here real quick. So this one has some work in progress. Going back in the stock, that subtracts out. And this one here has some different weights or different uh, relative weightings on the cost. So uh, we know that the Chateau is a little less valuable than this center cut eight ounce tenderloin. And this medallion is really not as desirable. So it's only $9 a pound. That's our market cost that we set. Based on these relative weights, it uses that to, to take this 1633 and spread it around for today's cost. So today it costs you $20.28 a pound to make this beef chateau. Okay, let's take a look at another meat processing company. This one processes chicken. I'll zoom into purchasing and inventory control here. And let me find an item here to look at. Let's look at this one. I'm gonna hit the history on it. Here's the sales history on it. But I'm gonna jump over to the production history. And I can see every time we made this finished good item, I can see what date we made it. I can see what our yield was on our primary item. So we're really trying to achieve this tender fritter 30 pound, but we had an 8.8% yield on the secondary items. So downgrade items, uh, ones that you're sending out for prison bids and things like that. And, um, <clears throat> pardon me. We can see different uh, line utilization issues. So you, you, you ran for 7.9 hours that day and you were down for one hour. And why were you down? You can see that your problem with the spiral freezer. And so you were up 87% of the time. So a lot of information there. And then you can see uh, labor hours, you had 316 man hours of labor on that production run, $2,400. And you see it was 7.76 cents a pound and your target was nine cents a pound. So you did okay there. And you saved $409 based on budget. Your cost per pound was a buck 41 for the product and seven cents for the labor. So $1.48 total. And then you can see also a breakdown here that your meat was $1.07, your labor was 7 your marination was 2.4, your breading, your oil, your nitrogen, your packaging, all of those components there you can see how you're doing over time. So you can see your meat cost was fluctuating between the, the low 90s and uh, $1.07. Your, your labor cost was fluctuating bit, it kind of spiked right here. So you can find out what was happening that day. Uh, your breading cost, looks like it's pretty stable. Your oil's pretty stable, nitrogen pretty stable. 
So a, a lot of a lot of good information can be gleaned just from looking at this, just zooming into an item. Let's take a look in the production module of this company. And we're going to run a report for the month. Okay, this shows you everything that was produced for the month. So here's shift number one on this day. So this was the Monday the 1st. Company number one, the processing department. So here they're making some IQF tenders. Here they started with 33,000 pounds of raw chicken and ended up with 37,000 pounds of, of dusted tenders. 36,300 was the main product they were shooting for. And then there were two downgrade items, 720 pounds and 780 pounds. So here's the percentage, 96% uh, was the main item. And here they were down for a little while, and so there's the reason they were down, waiting on maintenance to fix. <clears throat> Let's take a look. Oh, by the way, back here, there's 1.6 hours of downtime on an eight hour shift. So let's look at some other ones here. Wendy's Spicy Filet. And there's an issue with the metal detector. Homestyle Filet, they had a problem with the batter dip not working. So every time it shows you what what happened for the day, what happened for the shift, how profitable it was, and then let's go down all the way to the bottom of this month. Okay, so at the bottom of the month you see a grand roll up of everything. So you had seven million pounds of raw chicken come in, 8.3 million come out, and you were up 86% of the time, and you see how many hours of labor you had, and labor per pound, etc., and 303 batches. And then you can look after that, you see by item. So every time you made the Denny's breaded tender in that month, you made it five different times, and it's all rolled up here. So your total labor on that item was 11,600. You had 1,295 hours of man hours of labor, and you're only down one hour. Your total pickup was 42.9%, and your downgrade was 4.8%. So you beat your target there, that's why it's green, and you missed your target there on the pickup. The pickup is how much percent gain from raw to finished good you had in terms of weight. So you can look at things like this and say, okay, why did we make this item 11 times? Or why were we down on this item for four hours? Really good information to be able to analyze your business. These are just a few of the thousands of features built into the software to make your business more efficient, more productive. It doesn't matter if you're a meat company or a bakery or a wine distributor, or a cheese manufacturer, a sausage maker. There are features in the software built in there for you to make your business run smoother. Please visit the website www.eicsoftware.com for more information or email sales at eicsoftware.com if you have any questions and if you would like a proposal on moving forward with your business in EIC software.